Hello everyone. So this is part five of our series of discussions about group theory. This is actually a continuation of the Lie groups, where in part four we discuss the generators of the continuous groups. If you are not able to watch my previous videos about group theory or about mathematical physics, you can watch them in my YouTube channel, Thoughts of a Theorist. Now let us try to hold the coordinates of a system fixed and rotate a function psi x, y, z or psi as a function of x, y, z relative to our fixed coordinate. We recall that if we have x prime or if we have this rotated coordinate system, this is actually just equal to the rotation vector or rotation matrix uh, denoted by r times x where x is basically our original coordinate system or the equation for our original coordinate system. We define r on psi by this mathematical equation. We have r as a function of this spatial coordinates. And this is equal to psi prime uh, as a function of x, y, z, which could just be equal to psi times uh, x prime. Now just imagine that we rotate this coordinate system in three dimensions with respect to the z-axis by an angle, say, an angle psi. Uh, so this is angle psi. And obviously now we can denote this rotation matrix or rotation operator as RZ, basically because this is with respect to the z-axis. Now we have x prime, y prime, z prime are the new coordinates or in terms of the Dirac uh, symbol or, or the bracket or Dirac notation, we can uh, basically just write this one uh, as um, R prime ket. Or, or any any notation will do for as long as it describes your system. And this is equal to the uh, multiplication of the rotation matrix times the uh, unrotated coordinate system. So here in three dimensions, of course, you know, if we have this one, psi, and this is psi. So basically in the x prime axis, you know, this is y prime and this is x prime. Obviously, we can describe x prime as, hey, this is x cosine of phi plus y sine of psi, okay, plus, of course, zero, z, no? because z is where the axis of rotation lies. And we also have here y prime, no? which uh, basically is equal to a negative x sine of psi. Okay, we have plus uh, y cosine of psi plus 0z. Again, 0z because basically the axis of rotation is with respect to the z axis. And in terms of matrix, we can just write this one as, okay, this one. We have cosine of psi, sine of psi 0. We have negative sine of psi, cosine of psi 0. And we have 0, 0, 1. And so basically here, we have z is equal to z prime. Okay, and multiplied to the unrotated uh, coordinate uh, system. No? So this is now our rotation, um, rotation matrix or rotation operator as a function of psi. Thus, uh, if we're going to get the derivative of this matrix with respect to psi, okay, obviously, you know, we have this one is a sine a negative sine of psi. Okay, we have uh, the derivative of sine is cosine of psi. This is zero. This is a negative cosine of psi. Okay, we have a cosine. This is the derivative with respect to psi is negative sine of psi. And of course, the derivative of 1 with respect to psi, since this is constant, is equal to 0. So basically, we just have to write these terms here no? and multiply negative i. Okay, So we have, uh, what is this? This would be positive sine of psi. This would be negative i. Okay, This would be negative i after multiplying i. No? So we have this is negative i. This is positive i. This will now be... Uh, positive i because we have negative times negative and this would be 
of course, this would be um, Arastes, a uh, positive sign. Okay? However, uh, we have this limit that psi is equal to zero. So basically, uh, everything else would be equal to zero except this one. No? There's two terms or two elements of this matrix that have cosine. Because basically, cosine of zero, as we know, is equal to one. No? You have cosine of zero is equal to one. And there is still remaining i's in this um, elements of the matrix. Okay, so then we have this following mathematical equations. Now, if we consider the rotation matrix with respect to the z-axis for very small psi, where we have psi is a function of these three spatial coordinates, we can actually uh, extend this one in terms of uh, this notations or, or in terms of this um, this mathematical equation. So basically, um, expanding this one, so we have here psi times uh, the uh, times uh, as, as a function of x, y, z minus this uh, delta psi or this small psi times x as a function or, or times partial with respect to y of psi minus y times partial with respect to x of psi plus this uh, remaining terms in the series. No? Or we can just describe this one as the truncation or the, the, the errors in this series, where these are the terms in the higher order derivatives no, of this series. And if we consider only this uh, first order derivatives, we have Rz, or the rotation with respect to the z-axis times this one. We actually just have to copy this one. This is actually just equal to 1 minus I delta psi Lz times psi as a function of x, y, z. Basically, it is just this one. No? We disregard or we neglect this, uh, this, these terms in the higher order derivatives because basically these are just uh, the approximations. No? So we factor out psi, and that is why we have 1 minus i delta psi times Lz. And basically here, the Lz obviously could be seen directly as negative i, okay, we have times x times partial of y with respect to, uh, partial with respect to y of psi minus y times partial with respect to x of our psi. And this is actually the component, no? This is uh, a component of, this is the z component of our uh, orbital angular momentum. Angular momentum okay which is given by this now getting the derivative of our rz with respect to psi this gives us the limit now this is actually the definition of our derivative in calculus okay which uh, basically is just the limit now our our small psi or as, as, as our delta psi approaches to uh, this approaches to zero and this is equal to negative i lz rz times uh, as a function of psi. Now, obviously, we can directly uh, integrate this one. No? We just have to multiply both sides by uh, d psi, okay, times or, or d psi over rz psi. No? So we multiply both sides by d psi over rz as a function of psi. And this directly gives us this one. And as we know, the integral of this is ln. No? So this is ln of rz. Of course, we have here uh, plus c. No? And this is equal to negative i uh, psi times lz. Of course, now we have again plus c here, but it could be canceled out. No? So we can just cancel out c. And exponentiating this one, we exponentiate. So basically, this will be equal to just Rz is equal to the exponent of negative i psi times Lz. Okay, so we have this uh, new, uh, what, is, what is this? New equation for our rotation matrix with respect to the z axis. If we recognize that the operator Lz is equal to xyz, times this uh, generator Sz times partial with respect to x 
partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z, it becomes clear that our commutation, uh, if we have to consider this uh, operators Lx and Ly, the commutation of this two could actually be expressed in terms of the uh, Einstein summation, or in terms of the Levi-Civita symbol. Uh, and this is equal to I times the Levi-Civita, or we have epsilon xyz times lz. And in general, okay, this is in general, I can just express, is, uh, express it as the commutation of Li and Lj is equal to I times epsilon Ijk times Lz. And uh, basically, we already know, know the properties of this Levi-Civita symbol, where if we have an even permutation, okay, we have a different value to an odd permutation and so on. So if you have questions or clarifications, suggestions regarding this topic, you may just comment your topics or your, your suggestions in our comment section. Thank you so much.